Hey everyone, thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. If you are new here, my name is Kim, and yes, I am that crazy teacher and dog mom living in Japan that they warned you about. <laughs> today is November 13th, 2023, and it is officially my last day of being 64 years old. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> uh, that's right. Tomorrow, I officially become a senior citizen, and I thought in today's video, I would talk about some of the things that I really wasn't prepared for and still am not prepared <laughs> for turning 65. I know for many of you, that number is so far away from you, and yet, at the same time, is it really? Perhaps you know somebody that is older, or maybe your grandparents are my age, your parents are my age. I guess nowadays it could even be your great-grandparents are around my age. I thought I could share information that might help maybe people that you know that are my age, or maybe it will help you someday. Maybe it can even help you get better prepared for your future because it comes a lot faster than you think and I'm sure things are even going to change because the life that I experienced probably when I was your age now is so different from the way things are now. So this video is going to be done with limited editing so please excuse my speech quirks and bad habits the bad lighting, my mistakes. I'm just going to kind of talk very casually as if I were just sitting down with you and having a nice chat. Yeah, if you have questions or anything on the way, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And of course, if you find what I'm sharing interesting or you decide that you would like to join me on this journey, please like and subscribe and I will be more than grateful to have you in the YouTube community that I have here. All right, where do we start? My mom just had a birthday a couple weeks ago, and she turned 91. And I remember when I said to her, oh, happy birthday, and, you know, did the usual happy birthday stuff, my mom said, oh, I just want to forget my birthday. And I kind of got a little bit snappy with her, and I didn't mean to, but I said, Mom, that's kind of a terrible thing to say. And she goes, no, I just want to forget it's my birthday. And then I did snap back, and I said, Mom, do you know how many people would kill to become 91 years old? You're healthy, you have your mind, you're living at home and not somewhere where you don't want to live, and you basically can still do all the things that you enjoy doing. You can still eat the things you enjoy doing, and there are some people that are way, way younger than you that can't do that, and they're probably thinking, gosh, I, I hope I make it up to 91, so I think you should be grateful for the age that you become. So, right, I guess the way my mom and I see life sometimes is a little bit different, and I think I got my point across, but that's how I've always approached life, is every time I turn a new age, every time I have a new experience, whether it be good or bad, I see it as a blessing. I see it as a learning experience. And so turning 65, for me, I am so grateful that I have made it this far, and that I have been able to live a life, um, for the most part, filled with a lot of more, well, I shouldn't say um, a lot of, I should say more blessings than negative experiences. I've been really lucky with the people that I've had in my life. Um, I've been blessed to be able to work in a job that I love, in a job that I've always wanted to do, and living in a place where I'm at peace with. And I'm not going to say that it's always easy, because... Throughout your life, you're always going to have decisions to be made. You're going to have 
hurdles and roadblocks and things that set you back and things that maybe could destroy your self-confidence or the way you see things, the way you see people, um, just so much, right? So first of all, before I even get started about how to prepare for turning 65, I just think whatever age you become, you've been gifted with another year to create the life that you want to live. Now, granted, when you're turning two years old or three years old, you don't really create the life, right? I mean, you have people around you that do that. So I'm more or less talking about when you reach the age where you do have to make choices and make decisions and live with those decisions. Well, one of the first things that I would be a strong advocate of is making sure that you do keep health a priority. It's so easy when you're younger to forget about things like your diet or things that you are putting into your body or on your body or whatever. Um, because those things at the time seem great and you don't realize later on down the road how those things could affect you. I <clears throat> I kind of laugh because I think I've always been pretty good about my diet and what I eat and also about things like maybe skin care and stuff. But at the same time, when we were teenagers, right, we didn't really think about things like sun proof sun protection, S SPFs, or anything like that. We went out and we just lathered on the baby oil when we went to the beach. And, right, we used to think it was okay to get um, burnt before you get tanned, right? So sometimes you would get all red, and then later on that would change to a tan. Or you wouldn't think about putting things like moisturizer on when you go to bed and all that. That being said... I think when I turned 13, I did join the crowd at wanting to use products. But I just remember washing my face all the time with Noxzema because we liked the smell. And the big fragrance of that time was Love's Baby Soft. And Oil of Olay was for old people. But... I remember getting oil of Olay and lathering it on because I love that like pink color. You don't realize it until you get older how much skin or sun damage, how much you don't realize how much damage the sun has done to your skin until you get older. Same with things like wrinkles and all that. And nowadays, right in your 20s and your and teens, you have access to so many more beauty products and you have access to so many um, more things that uh, try to keep your skin young and refreshed and healthy all the way up until you turn like in your 40s and 50s. So you're really lucky. At the time, I, I don't even think we even thought about skin care. The main thing was just, right, you just didn't want to get zits or anything. And uh, what do we use? We always used to use, right, um, oh, I think, was it Clearacel? <laughs> Clearacel for zits. And then I read somewhere, right, to use toothpaste. All those kind of things, right, you, you read about it and you just don't want to get breakouts. But now they just have so much more, I think. The other thing, too, is... We had magazines, and so we'd read about skincare um, from the magazines, but we didn't have things like YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or Reels or beauty influencers or, um, you know, recommendations. We just saw things on TV, like maybe commercials, and we'd buy the products and try them that way. So, yeah, so you guys nowadays I think are really lucky but I will say the more you pay attention to your skin and your health uh, I think it does help in the long run I can't say that I was the best eater but I always ate really slow and I always did eat pretty healthy 
Uh, I wasn't, you know, we, we didn't, I can't even remember when I was growing up what exactly we, we ate. Uh, but I think for the most part, I ate my fruits and vegetables. I made sure I had balanced meals. I guess my mom made sure I ate balanced meals. And I think when you're in your 20s, I was living in university housing at the time. I think we all made sure that whenever we cooked, we prepared meals that were healthy and balanced. And that just kind of continued on. And when I came to Japan, I remember I made a promise to myself that I was going to eat everything and, and not be so picky and not question a lot of things. Um, I think I was a pretty picky eater when I was back in the U.S. and eating uh, in my teens and 20s. I did eat a lot of fast foods. I like everybody, I ate a lot of junk food. I was lucky because it didn't really affect my skin. Mm, some people probably thought I was too thin, but I know I wasn't, I didn't suffer from any eating disorders. And then when I came to Japan, um, the first thing people commented on was that I was looking healthier because my face was getting fuller and it was kind of a polite way to say, hey, you're, you're gaining weight. But uh, I think during the times when I was growing up, I didn't really think about things like nutrition and, and health as much as I probably should have. That being said, around my 20s and 30s, I did pay a lot more attention to what I ate. One of the things that I think I wasn't prepared for is the fact that at 65, I would have to stop working and I would have to formally retire from my job. And I didn't really think about that because I always thought you just work until you decide that you want to retire. And when you retire, it was the decision that you made not to work anymore. I didn't realize that sometimes retirement would be decided for you. And I know that sounds naive, but I just, I, I didn't think about it. And so when my school told me that this would be my last year, it kind of threw me for a loop because I thought, wait a minute, I'm still active. I still feel mentally okay. And you're telling me now I, I can't work anymore. Where's my paycheck going to come from? What am I going to do? And it was a little bit of a panic-stricken feeling. All my friends, though, most of my friends, my high school friends, or the people that I grew up with that are the same age as me, they're all retired already. And some of them retired earlier. And they're living their best life. They're traveling. They're, you know, doing things that they want to do. And I thought... <laughs> Okay, what's wrong with me? Why am I still like, I have to work? Is it my mentality? Like, and then I thought about it, and it's, I think, because I've always had to work so hard to get my paycheck to live the lifestyle that I want to leave, what want to leave, that I want to live. And I just always, you know, it was always kind of like, go, 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 and no breaks. And now that I thought about it, right, or not now that I think about it, I, I guess it's maybe they designate an age so that you can start thinking that you don't have to work so hard and that you can take your foot off the gas a little bit and start navigating new roads. And so even though I'm still kind of undecided as to what I'm going to do, I still intend to work in some capacity. I was really lucky because I can work part-time at my current uh, position, my current school, for way less pay. Like, it's, you know, don't get me wrong, it's not going to be the same paycheck, but it will be different conditions. And I'm kind of looking forward to those conditions because even though it's less pay, 
there's a lot of responsibilities and duties that I will no longer have to do, which is kind of cool because I've been a teacher for, what, 40 years? I started teaching in over 40 years. I started teaching in 1980, and, right, I've always been pretty good work ethically, and I work straight through from the time I was 1980, different countries, of course, and different work assignments. But, right, it always included having to take care of, you know, curriculum stuff, my class, my students, going to meetings, doing all the extras that come along with teaching, like parent conferencing and entrance exams and writing reports, appraisals, um, international exchange trips, domestic trips, all that kind of stuff. And now I don't have to do all that. <laughs> and it's weird. It's weird to me to think that I could be teaching and not have to go to faculty meetings or staff meetings. It's weird to think that you know, when my school has an event or something really big, um, I don't have any duties. I I'm not assigned to do any of the things that I'm used to doing. So it will be a big change. I think perhaps when you're younger, you don't think about, um, you know, where you're going to be in 40 years. Are you still going to be in the current job you have now? Or are you going to switch and go different directions? I think that could be a cultural difference between Japan and the U.S. Because I, I just always thought, I'll go where the wave takes me. Uh, if I decided I didn't want to teach anymore, I would have thought nothing about quitting and moving on to a different job. I was lucky because, right, I didn't have to work summers. So summers I could work different jobs and see if I liked them. I always had the chance to do different opportunities. But I feel like here in Japan, it's sort of like you almost decide things so early. And if you make that commitment, you're set for life, but you really can't move anywhere else. So I see what my friends are going through now, where right? They don't know whether or not to work permanently and take on a permanent contract position or if they want to go explore other things. And that's going to be your decision in the future. Um, do you always want to live and work in the same country? Obviously, at the time when I started teaching, I didn't think I was going to move to Japan. Uh, I never even dreamed that I would teach in a foreign country, let alone live half my life. Well, I guess now it's over half my life in that foreign country. Um, I like the surprise of not knowing where I'm going to go and what I'm going to do. But that's just me. So it's something, whatever you are doing now, maybe in the back of your head, you you know, you think of what you might be doing down the road. And and I will say, if you've got dreams or if you've got um, bucket list things, don't forget to do them. <laughs> because I know there's some people that they have everything so planned out. Like they, um, they know what they're going to do in, you know, so many years time. They have an age limit or an uh, age window of when they want to get married or have children or travel around the world or go to this country. And maybe they have already set an age limit of when they want to stop working and retire. And I, I wasn't that type of person. I was sort of like, uh, okay, oh, hmm, that sounds fun. Maybe I'll do that. All right. Hey, I'm going to Japan <laughs> or right. Uh, hey, I'm moving to here. Oh, I'm looking for a job. Hey, yes, I'm going to Guma, right? Or whatever. It's just, you never know, but that's my path or my journey. And 
there's nothing wrong with whichever journey you decide to choose. I will say this though, I do think the way my journey has went, I feel like maybe it better prepared me or it helps me when things don't go as planned or when you have a monkey wrench thrown at you. How did that, that's a weird saying, huh? A monkey wrench thrown at you. Okay, so, or a hurdle or a wall or whatever. And, and I just think the way my philosophy is, I just think life is so unexpected and there's no guarantees. And you might think that you've made the right choice and it might turn out to be not the right choice. And I, I'm never one to be stuck somewhere. If, if I feel like I'm trapped or stuck, I'm going to find that way out. Or if doors are shutting all in my face, I'm going to find that one little loophole or that one little crack where I can get in, in a different way. And maybe it's past experiences that help you navigate in that way. I don't wish that on anybody because, you know, I think sometimes it is so much more reassuring or relaxing when you know that you don't have to work so hard or scrounge or hustle a little bit to, um, to get through different things or different hurdles that are thrown at you. But um, I do think each path has its pros and cons. So be prepared. <laughs> um, yeah, be prepared and just know that, um, yeah, that some of the choices that you make, um, don't worry if it's not the right choice. Or if you get stuck, there's sometimes always a way out and if there isn't a way out there are people to help you that can help you find that way out or navigate or at least just take a breath because I think I've learned also that you're going to have people coming in and out of your life all the time and because I've been transient let me go back a little bit I went to the same school. I went from kindergarten all the way up to 12th grade in the same school district with the same group of people. And when I went to university, I had a lot of my high school friends that also went to the same university. So I had a pretty good security blanket all the way growing up. And I always thought, hey, you know, it's kind of um, cool to be one of those kids that moves around or at the I thought also too it's it's hard for the the kids that had to move and make new friends and they get comfortable and then they left and even some of my friends that came to elementary school they were there for like 2 years and then they left and you think oh I wonder what ever happened to so and so and I think when you're a mover it really helps you learn how to adjust, how to transition, how to be comfortable with who you are and be comfortable with your own company because you might have to go through that whole process of making new friends again or getting adjusted to a new background or new culture, whatever it is. And I didn't have that growing up, but for some reason, um, I think that was something that always was one of my strong points is being able to uh, uplift, wait, that's not the word, uproot, is that the word? <laughs> uproot and start fresh somewhere else. It used to bother me. It used to, when I was living in Shizuoka, I, I thought that was my forever place. It, and it still kind of is. It is my home because I do have a place there. But I thought I was going to stay in that area and work there for, you know, the rest in, of my working life until I retired. And then when things didn't turn out that way and I had to suddenly leave and find another job, it kind of 
pissed me off at first because I thought, God, why does this always happen? Why is it that I have to always be on the lookout? Why is it that I'm always on the hunt or, or searching and I can't just have some sort of security? But when I think about it, if I didn't have that experience, I wouldn't have met a lot of the people that I have in my life. And, and oh gosh, just so many things. You just realize that people come into your life in and out and you just never know how they're going to affect your life or change your life. I guess you do because some of you get married to those people. Um, right? And you're always going to have people that you're attracted to or are attracted to you or you connect in some way and maybe who knows maybe because you're here in this video and you're listening we've made a connection and if there's something I can do to help you or make you feel better about something or tell you that it's okay <laughs> it's okay you can make it you know, far in your life without really having a plan. And, you know, if, if we've connected in that way, maybe that was the master plan. Who knows? Another thing I wasn't prepared for, and I'm dealing with it all now, I didn't realize that there were so many things that you have to do um, before you retire. And you guys all know the obvious ones, right? Or the ones, make your savings, build up your savings, invest, uh, get your retirement fund ready, all that stuff. And sorry, this I just realized I think this is kind of crooked, but it's okay. Um, and, oops, sorry, it still is crooked. Okay, I apologize. Um, and I did have, I started building a little bit of a savings. A little bit <laughs> and yet at the same time I I was or am paying into Japan's pension fund and all that but I didn't I went I guess papers started coming around when you're 60 what I didn't know is that you have to start all this paperwork and documentation earlier than I did or than I am because I guess if I would have started at the paperwork going, then I was guaranteed to start getting my pension at a certain time. But I just thought if I wasn't going to collect it, why was I going to start filing the papers and stuff? And so I'm still learning now, like, um, Kim, you should have done this at this time. Kim, when you got this in the mail, you should have done this. And I just, I sat there the other day, I was at work asking the office all these things that I was supposed to do. And I just, after I talked with the office, I came into my classroom and I just started crying because it's like, I number one, I the manual is just, um, I did get, I could get it translated in English, but it's just so much stuff. And I mean, it's almost like, Gosh, you have to do all this? Like, shouldn't it be when you get older? It should be made easier. And it's actually, I think, more difficult. But maybe that's just because I'm in a foreign country. I don't know. So um, I did make an appointment, which will be in December, to meet with the person or the pension people or whatever it is that we have to talk about and get straightened out. I didn't realize that there are certain places that I could get money or pension or whatever, but you have to, once again, file and apply. I mean, it's just as bad as taxes. Like, um, I was, my dad always used to do my taxes, and then after he passed away, everything fell on me to learn how to do it, and it's hard to learn when, when you know, you have to do it but you're on your own and you don't have your dad around to like say, dad, help. <laughs> so, so many life skill stuff that I had to 
learn on my own. And my advice to everybody is uh, don't wait till the last minute or you'll be like me. But at the same time, am I panicking? Not not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Ask me in another um, year or so. But yeah, it's just, it's a lot of stuff you have to do. And I just didn't realize that. The good thing is the medical care here is pretty good uh, for seniors. And I think Japan is a country that um, really helps out the elderly, probably because we're an elderly nation or we're becoming an elderly nation. And um, I, I do feel like I get the help that I need or there are people that can help me and and my mom as well because my mom's kind of in the same boat as me right as far as elderly care and there probably is still a lot of wait there probably are still a lot of things that I have to learn about that you don't really want to think about and we're talking you know what happens when this happens or what happens when this or this so yeah not fun that's one of the to me that's one of the stressful parts about getting older because you have all the stuff to do that that it's your first time doing it obviously and you can't really ask somebody that's older than you because they're probably not here anymore and yeah i maybe i i wish i i had a older relative that i could have asked what do we do in this case so maybe that's where um i'm lucky because i do have friends in japan of all ages so yeah so <laughs> <laughs> when it's your time to retire, those of you that are in your 40s and 50s, maybe I can help if I'm still around. and if, Or I'll make the videos for it. So maybe someday when you're looking up how to retire successfully in Japan or the things you need to do when you're retiring in Japan, wait for that video. <laughs> subscribe now. <laughs> like and subscribe now so that you can... Oh, click the notification bell so that you can get that video when it's your time. <laughs> I'm I'm half joking, half being serious. <laughs> well, speaking of medical care and just you know, the thought of being older. The weird part for me is I think I still have the mindset of a kid or a young person only because of my job. And the people I hang around with because right I work with elementary school students um, children and a lot of the teachers well <laughs> all of the teachers are younger than me <laughs> especially because duh I'm the only one retiring this year so yeah so everybody I work with is younger than me my close friends here are all younger than me and some are like, some are like way younger, like they could be my grandkids, but they're the people I hang out with and enjoy being with. My mindset, sometimes when I'm with people that are younger, or even with my students, I don't even, I don't, it, it's just kind of weird because my mind is in kid mode or teenage mode or young mode, but my body... <laughs> My body and my face and everything else is in old mode, right? And it's weird because I, I don't know if any of you do this. If you do, comment down below and, and make me feel better. <laughs> when I go shopping, when I go shopping for clothes or when I like look for accessories, I'm still thinking like I'm young, like I'm in my 20s. Like, ooh, that's a cute outfit. Heaven forbid, I can't wear that anymore. <laughs> I used to, when I was a kid, or when I was, I loved plaid mini skirts. You know, like, y'all remember when Love Story came out with Ally McGraw? Oh, I just, I loved the fashion in that movie. The plaids, you know, skirts with the tights and the mufflers and the sweaters. I like that. 
<laughs> and, um, right, I see a lot of the fashions now, but, geez, I can't wear them. Heels. I, I, don't, I don't think I can, I, I think I might break an ankle if I try wearing heels. I used to wear, like, super big platforms. Now, granted, I still wear a few platforms, but right in my head, I'm looking at clothes that I probably would have worn when I was younger, and no way are they going to look, you know, good on me anymore. But in my head, I'm still thinking, ooh, I like that. <sighs> what was I thinking? Same with, like, when I go to the the hospital, right? So every hospital visit, right, I'm uh, every couple of months I go for these checkups and... I give like so much blood, like it's, I'm surprised that I still have blood left, but they take out vials and vials of blood and do all these tests. And I'm sitting in the waiting room and I'm like, oh my God, it's, everybody's old, but that's me. <laughs> that's me too. Like I'm probably even older than some of the people that are also in the waiting room. And I don't know. It's, um, Whoops, as I scratch my face. It's just, it's a weird feeling when you're, you know, you see people and they're walking and you think, oh, you know, um, I'm actually probably older than that person, but why do I feel like I'm not that old? When a place has a senior discount and uh, you're ordering and they ask you, oh, um, I don't mean to be rude, but are you over 60? Because you can get a discount. I'm like, oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, right? I mean, when you get carded for the first time, right? You're dying to get carded because you want to be like, yes, I'm, I'm 21. Because 21, that was back in California, right? You go to get a drink or something and you want to be ID'd. You go to Las Vegas, you're gambling. You want someone to say, excuse me, do you have an ID? <laughs> Yes, I'm 21 because you think, oh, I still look young. Now it's the opposite for me. Now it's like, um, oh, would you like a senior discount? But that being said, there are still places that I go to and I say, um, hey, I'm going to be 65 in, in two more weeks. Can I get the 65 you know, year old discount? No, nope. I have to wait till I'm officially 65. So next time I go out with my 24 year old friend, I can get the 65-year-old discount. <laughs> oh, gosh. I was so bummed because I know the one place I was really, 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 really looking forward to was International House of Pancakes because I knew International House of Pancakes had a discount when you turn 55. And that was, I couldn't wait to turn 55 to get that discount. Well, now that I'm turning 65 tomorrow, I can get all the discounts. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, so, yeah, I guess those were the just some of the things that I wasn't prepared for. And <sighs> I guess things to look forward to. But as I said at the beginning, I feel really, really blessed to have made it this far. To still be able to do the things that I want to do and hope to do. Um, and not even have things affect me in the way that they would when I was younger. I have to say, when you're younger, you're, you're kind of like under pressure sometimes to feel like, oh, I have to get this done or, or you have to do this or, oh, if you know, if I'm not dressed this way or if I don't do this, people are going to think this. And now for everything, it's the whole, I don't give a for anything. And it's, I guess it's like a kid. When you're a child, you can wear whatever you want. You can have mix match clothes and mix match shoes and stomp all over and, and walk all goofy and, and nobody cares. And it's kind of the same for older people too. You're just, you know, they may think, oh, <laughs> that she must be going through dementia. Um, which, I, who knows, maybe that's what people think. Like, okay, we'll excuse her because 
she's a little bit older. I get that from my workmates already, you know, like, oh, Kim came in, you don't need to, don't lift the heavy chairs. Um, we were doing some seasonal duties at school and we have so many things to move, you know, to prepare for certain activities. So we're moving chairs and desks all around, but there's teachers that come, oh, Kim, Kim, you know, um, you can, you can put the paper, you can tear down the paper and put that in the trash. As if I don't have a any skills anymore. Like, I'm like, oh, it's, it's okay, I can do it. No, 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 no. It, like, you get the easy job. Um, <laughs> I'm, I am flattered, you know, like, I do get the easiest jobs when it comes to assignments, or it's like, um, you know, as soon as they see me carrying something, oh, no, 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 you don't, you don't need to do that. Uh, yeah, which is kind of nice. <laughs> At the same time, like, I mean, I don't want to always be seen as, you know, I don't always want to be seen as old, like a, a senior citizen, but I am. I can't deny it, right? <laughs> it's a weird mindset. So, yeah. So, anyway, I'm going to embrace my last day of being 64. And the next video you see, which maybe I'll post something tomorrow, will be when I am officially 65. Yay! <laughs> uh, I wonder if anyone has ever had a birthday cake with 65 candles because by the time you try lighting it all, the wax will have melted because, you know, those birthday candles are always, they're not the best wax. They melt really quickly. Um, or the smoke, I, those jokes, right? The smoke alarm will go off. Well, now I get it because I probably would set off the smoke alarm. <laughs> I don't think any of the, nobody really knows, a few people know that it's my birthday. Um, I think a few people know how old I really am. The kids, they know, but they don't really get it. You know, like when they say, how old are you? When I'm practicing the, the conversations with them, I always have to say, like, I'll say, how old are you? And the child will answer back, I'm seven years old. And then I'll go, seven years old? Me too because I have to be like the part of the child and they'll start laughing. Like, no, you're not. And I'm like, oh. and they're like, yeah, you're 30. And in my head, oh, thank you. Right. I'm like, no, I'm 30 times two plus five minus one. And then I'll be like, Rokuchi which is like 64 in Japanese. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh. And then you feel all flattered because, right, you get that reaction. Um, so I guess I can milk that for a little bit. But I am, once again, really happy to be here and be able to celebrate not only with you, but with my mom. Anyways, I could ramble on and on like a, like a typical senior citizen would do. But I'm going to end this video here. So thank you so much for stopping by and sharing my birthday eve my senior citizen 65 six blah, blah, that's a tongue twister 65th senior citizen official birthday eve with me um i appreciate you all so much if you would like to subscribe and join me for future videos please do so because I would love to have you as part of this community and I will continue to share things about Japan, take you to places in Japan, share with you my journey here and sometimes along the way I bring my dog Bandit and people that um, come and go into my life. Alright, thank you again. Take care. Bye.